The Festival of Sail, which will be on the waterfront for the next five days. We do ask that you're very careful as you move up and down the stairways. They are steeper than the ones you have at home. So please use the handrails, take one step at a time. And if you go to the outside decks, please watch your step going through the doorways. All of the outside doors have thresholds. So please lift your feet. Now the real reason I'm going over here is to show you the venue. You might not know it, hopefully you do, but uh, the reason all these ships are coming into town is for the Festival of Sail. I'm the, I'm the port captain here for Home War, and I'm running the boat today, but they allow me to have a second job. If you look on the starboard side, you're going to see the star of our show, so to speak. The Star of India, the big sailing ship there was built in 19, or 1863 oh, yeah. over in Ramsey, the Isle of Man. Uh, notice she's got part of her foremast, that's the forward mast. Part of it is down, they're doing some maintenance there. Anyway, that ship has been around the world 21 times, been in the ground, collisions, fires, mutinies, you name it. She still gets underway and goes sailing. She has 20 sails, not all of her set today. 60 volunteer crew, and no engine. The largest and the actually the oldest iron hole sailing ship in the world is still active. And here's my secret. She goes to the right, I'm the captain. I get to sail that ship. And that's why I'm here today, because you see, well, it'll become obvious through the day. I'm going to tell you more than you want to know about these ships, believe me. So, that's the Star of India. She's called a bark rig, three masts. Look at the sails. There are triangular sails, those are four and a half. And there are what we call square sails, and you're just seeing the size of them now. They're not really square, they're rectangular. But we call them squares. So three masts on that ship, square sails rig on the forward two, that makes that ship a star. Now this vessel was built uh, as a replica, but it's very active. We sailed the ship a lot. And uh, she was used in the movie Amistad by Steven Spielberg uh, way back when. And now they've built the replica Amistad, so it's a little different. But that's Spirit California, based and lives at the San Diego Maritime Museum. That's the official state uh, tall ship of the state of California. And you see the little squares on the white? Oh, they have one of the guns run out. They just decided not to shoot that. <laughs> now, throughout the event, by the way, you can buy tickets to go sailing on these ships, and they are actual gun battles. And the, the whole intent is to go out and sail around and shoot the blanks at each other. So, throughout the event, you'll see a lot of that. The next ship coming up is a ship called Tullymore. Tullymore is uh, uh, a NASA friend ship. I'm not sure if it's known as the language. But this one will be available too. You can go aboard. So again, she has actually three squares. She will have a four sole that's not set. She'll have a four sole. She will have a, a, a top sole, the one that's sort of popping there, and a two gallon. Now when the sails, when the square sails are set like that and it's flopping, that means it's called in the lifts. Uh, Basically, they're not set, they're not secured yet, and it means that they have to get a favorable wind condition, so I wouldn't be surprised if they don't set those as soon as they turn a little more right. <laughs> One thing about square rig sailing ships, they can't sail directly upwind. They can't even sail as close to the wind as some other vessels. Well, he became a legend, and he sailed a lot of square riggers in his time. The next ship coming up right now is called a brigantine, team, and this is the uh, Irving Johnson. This is named after him. These are with the Los Angeles Maritime Institute. I'm sorry, this is the Exie Johnson. Exie is made, named after Irving's wife. The Irving is farther back in the parade. I get them mixed up because they're identical. So uh, anyway, this is a brigantine, meaning two masts or more. Well, actually, a brigantine is two masts. But she has square sails all the way down to the deck on the four masts. That makes her different than a scooter. So that's the Exie Johnson. She's a brigantine. Sonia, she was originally a scooter in the same rig as the ship behind her, two masts with the higher one in back. And yes, I used to run Java as well. I think it's a little board. 
So let me guess, turn around, I'll go past those first three ships if I can catch them. And then we'll uh, put them on the port side for a minute. That's all I see. And especially when you attack, uh, those of you that are sailors know that when you attack a ship to turn uh, the bow into the wind, well, with these square sails, you actually end up putting the wind on the back side, the wrong side of those squares. So these ships actually come to a screeching halt when they're turning through the wind. So it's really not the rudder that turns, but it's the way you balance the sails when right? the ship twists while it's, uh, while it's turning. gas schooner. If you look back at Curlew, you notice the biggest sail, the main sail, was three-sided, three a triangle. It's called Marconi. Uh, but uh, what you're going to see now, this is still a schooner, but she's a gas schooner. Gas sails are the, the four-sided ones that are not sort of equal on each side. So uh, in spirit of Dana Point, she'll carry the uh, main sail, the foresail, or stay sail, and then a, a jib out there. Sometimes they set triangular sails on these ships above the gas. Those are called gaff topsails, and not all of them have them. So this is really a working type ship. She's armed too, so don't be surprised. Looks like they're a little light on crew right now, though. This is one of the boats that will be underway. You can actually go sailing on this boat uh, for some of the gun battles. You see the little, uh, going up the mast right next to the sails, you see the lines that are in the little sideways steps. Those are called ratlins, and that's how the crew gets up. Uh, sometimes on these vessels you have to go aloft to uh, trim some of these sails, and you climb up on the ratlins. The side wires are known as shrouds, and you hang onto the shrouds. And then if you step out on what's called on one of the yards, as you'll see here in just a minute on the uh, earl, that's called a foresail. Right above you have a topsail, then a top gallant. We call it to gallant. And then you have a royal on top of that. Look at the crew up there. They're standing on the foot rope. And then uh, if they're smart, they'll be clipped into what's called a jack stay. Uh, sailor, in the old days, it's called a jack. And the jack stay means that the jack is put on and stay on the yard. So that's the Irving Johnson. Again, scooters, it's either the taller mast in the act in the back or they're all the same level, and that's okay. This is a gaff three-masted schooner. This is called the American Pride. Uh, this boat was built, I think, in the 30s or 40s and operated way back east. Uh, she was called the Virginia for a while. I believe she was a pilot schooner. Pilot meaning they would take a, a local captain out to incoming and outgoing ships. And then she was converted to what's called the Natalie Todd, and now she's... Uh, called the American Pride. This one will be getting in the way for gun battles too. So a three massive gas schooner right there, American Pride. There's a, a private schooner in the, uh, well actually a couple of them are private, they're not all charter boats. So we have the, Amer the uh, American Pride and then the Patricia Bell. So here we have another Marconi schooner. Same rig, two masts, taller one in the back. Marconi rig, you know, meaning three sides. She has a uh, main staysail right in the middle, and then a four staysail and a jib. And then that little sail up on top, that's called a fisherman. Now, a lot of these sails were developed out of necessity. Back in the days of working sails, if you were out fishing and you caught and you filled your boat with fish, first, if you could get back to market first, you could get the fish. So uh, the 
the fishing boats develop these sails to give them higher speed, and that's only a fisherman for that very reason. Now, earlier I showed you some America's Cup class sailing yachts, and I told you there was a schooner called the America that that uh, raced the fleet of British vessels around the Isle of Wight in 1851. The very shiny black boat that is sailing right now on the starboard side is the schooner America. This is a, uh, a replica, full-size replica of that uh, sailing vessel from 1851. Teams of dolphins that can recognize, uh, let's say, swimmers or divers for security around vessels. They can patrol under the water, make sure there's no intruders. And then some of them are trained to recover objects off the bottom. Uh, you know, anything that might be on the bottom, they could recover. Some of them are trained to locate and even uh, release floating mines. You go into a minefield, you can send your dolphins in, and they can uh, actually clip the wires holding the mines to the bottom and let the wire the mines float up to the surface. Look at the uh, American Pride over here. Again, a three-masted scooter. Sometimes people ask those, those fuzzy things against the sails. Those are called baggy wrinkles. And they're actually anti-chafing here. The line coming down the side of the sail helps to support the bottom uh, spark, part of the gap. And, and, uh, if they didn't put some sort of material in there, there would be a lot of chafing. There you go. Okay. There would be a lot of chafing, so um, in the old days, sailors would spend a lot of time just taking old line and picking it apart and sort of weaving it into these things called baggy wrinkles, and that helps to stop the chafing of the sail. It's the only operational swift boat in the United States, and um, it came to us from the country of Malta, where it had been a, a Maltese uh, Coast Guard boat for many years, and then they were going to get rid of it, and we saw the shame in uh, scrapping it or sinking it, so we brought our museum and restored it. Like I said, we think it's the only working swift boat left in the whole U.S. Notice on the uh, ship in front of us, the yards, the square sails are now sort of put almost perpendicular to the ship. And that's what they do when they're going downwind. They don't want them braced over hard, so they, they catch a little more wind from behind this way. Okay, here comes another good shot of the Spirit of Dana Point coming up on our port side. If you look down to the right, under the bridge, you can see the uh, other active naval surface ships. It's part of what's called Surface Force Pacific.
right, folks, I'm going to start uh, trying to get clear traffic, and I'm going to go make one more pass by the venue. Again, if you get a chance to get down here, it's it's a lot of fun. In the next couple days down here, you can go aboard these ships. You, you get what's called a passport, and each ship you visit, they stamp it for you, so it's a memento. A lot of good... Uh, Good photo opportunities, especially when they do the gun battles out here. It's going to be madness down here, but in a fun way. And again, I'll mention the uh, ship store on the Berkeley uh, that coincidentally my wife runs. Uh, just happens to set up uh, out on the sidewalks as well. They have some outside. Thank you. 